song is so good if you like like Japanese music. Does anybody like Japanese music? Who doesn't, honestly? What? Yes, exactly, right? Anyway, super good. Um, it's, that takes a long time to go through when you're standing up here like, oh, it's still me. Um, cool. Well, thank you for that intro, Michael. Love you. Um, so we're talking this morning. Hopefully you're not super hungover. It's a pretty good turnout for it having been a party last night, like pretty solid. We're going to talk about words and how to make your words sell, which is a good thing, right? It's a good way to start the day. We're going to talk in particular today about how to be specific. Specific is something that I think we all know we're supposed to be with what we're writing, but then you get stuff on the page and you go through and you edit it all down to this like summarized, vague um, little mess. Um, I've been told that I say the word vague like a Canadian because I am Canadian, right? Vague, right? Canadian, right? yeah. All right, cool, cool, good start, okay. Um, but we're gonna talk about longer copy. We're not talking about long form sales pages. We're gonna talk about how to use more of your words to make more sales, okay. So I talk about this a lot, about getting specific and actually using more words than might be comfortable for you to use, than the marketing team or the boardroom really likes to see. And I go through and I do like webinars and talks like this and almost without fail, somebody will say at the end of a webinar or something, um, great, Joanna, that's all good, but you know, the average visitor only spends about 15 seconds on your website, so they're just not gonna read all that copy. The average visitor spends 15 seconds on your website. People say this, people tell me this, and I go like, so, like, so, like, I'm not trying to convert the average visitor. Are we trying to convert the average visitor? Has converting the average ever actually converted anybody ever in throughout history? And now I don't blame anybody or the guy who tries to derail my whole presentation um, for saying things like that because it, he comes by it honestly. I think we've been hearing for a long time from some very smart people. We heard about Jacob Nielsen yesterday, very briefly. No disrespect to the whole UX world. I'm from a world where I have to sell things or I don't have a job anymore. So, but what people hear is often things like, you know, you've got 10 seconds to leave an impression and tell people what they'll get. That's like 10 seconds to leave an impression and tell people what they'll get. Just, wow, 10 seconds, what am I gonna do with the remaining like nine seconds? Wow, that's all I have to do with my words in 10 seconds? Like we're asking a lot, we're asking a lot of copy, which is actually your online salesperson, right? What else is going to sell online except your words? Outside of saying, well, we have live chat. Well, <laughs> good, okay, then why do you have words on the page at all? We know we have words on the page in order to get people to say yes to something, right? To get them to move on to the next step, to say whatever yes that is, to sell whatever it is that you're trying to sell. But we put these crazy, oh, rules on there, so it actually didn't show my font, sorry, you didn't see that whole slide there. Um, but we put these rules on it when it comes down to it, copy either sells or it doesn't. It's not about 10 second copy, it's not about doing it as quickly as possible. The question is, is your copy moving people to say yes or isn't it? It's what a very simple way to measure whether copy is working or not. Not did it leave an impression, did it tell people what they'll get in 10 seconds or less. Those rules are harmful, they're very harmful and we've seen that they're harmful again and again in tests. I'm gonna show you some of that today. But what I know is that for almost every marketer in the room, the goal is to summarize. You're trying to say things in five words or less. You've heard words, you've heard like phrases about, you know, six word headlines is a pretty common idea. You should have a very short six word headline. This 10 second copy kind of idea. And I wanna ask you, you know, how is that actually working out for you? How is that summarized copy actually working out for you? Is it, is it working? Probably not working as well. And we look at it and wonder what's not working and I'm going to talk to you today about exactly what's not working. One sec, sorry. It's so dry. Okay. Now, I am not saying, when I'm talking about long copy, I'm not talking about, you know, long form sales pages. Like, 
this stuff. Okay, Todd knows his stuff. It's nothing against a long-form sales page, but I'm not here to try to convince you to write long-form sales pages. There's a time and a place. I'm not talking about that today. I'm not saying long-form sales pages with red bolding and yellow highlighting, all of that stuff. What I am saying is to give your copy some breathing room. Allow it to actually do its job. I'm saying you should not make images do all the heavy lifting all by themselves, or cram every important message you have into a video in the hopes that someone will watch it. So these couple slides I'm gonna show you, I did, I searched um, alternatives to Basecamp, and then looked at the landing pages that came up for the ads, actual paid ads driven to these pages. Um, and they're all, it's not like a, it's, it's a random sample, it wasn't cherry picked. Every single page that came up was trying so hard to not say anything at all, to be as vague as possible, to shove everything into images, into videos, into cramped little spaces. So I'm saying avoid doing the things that we think we're supposed to do as if words are like ugly on the page. Words are supposed to be on your page. They'll actually help sell. So avoid doing this. Avoid cramming all of your copy into this unreadable lump. When people say nobody reads online, it's this. Nobody reads that, and by the way, you can't see it, but you'll see it later, but the point is, what we can see is there is a little lump of copy up at the top there, no one knows what's inside, no one's going to read that. And this is the big one. Do not summarize everything in as few words as possible. I'm gonna show you why. I know you've heard throughout time and you've been supported maybe in boardrooms like for saying everything in as few words as possible. It doesn't work anymore. I don't know if it ever worked, but it certainly, we're gonna show you some examples. It doesn't work by and large. It works if you're high aware with, like you have high aware, awareness with high intent. We're not gonna get into those details, but every other person needs more copy than you're actually used to. Now, nobody else is really doing this, right? Everybody is kind of aiming for the same thing, to summarize their language. Um, and so there's kind of this safety in being vague because your competitors aren't saying very much and nobody else around you, no, nobody, none, of the, none of the sites you go to are really saying that much at a surface level as far as you can tell. But copy is that big opportunity then. Copy getting people to say yes with your words is such a big opportunity for so many of us. And if we don't take that opportunity, we're losing real sales if we don't actually push people to make a decision with our copy. And I know push isn't a friendly word, okay, nudge people to make a decision using our words. We're losing sales, not because we're selling poorly, but because people aren't making a decision at all. So many of our sales are lost not to our competitors, but to just a lack of decision. I'm just not gonna decide today. I'm just not interested in it. I, I don't know what you're trying to tell me. I don't know what this email is supposed to say. I don't know what this website is supposed to be telling me or this headline is supposed to mean. I don't get it. I don't know. I'm just gonna not decide at all. So if we can nudge more people to make that decision, imagine the opportunities that we have. Your copy's job then is to actually fight the force of inertia. It's there to keep people from just going on with their lives, from saying, you know what, I'm actually, I don't know what you're talking about, I don't have time to figure this out, I'm like just gonna keep doing what I've been doing, thanks, bye. Copy sells, or it doesn't, that's what it comes down to. So, what if we were to forget about the old rules, about these things that we've heard about 10 seconds and 15 seconds and all of that stuff, Forget about word count, forget about long versus short, forget about all of it, and instead just try to convert one person. What if we tried to do that? It's kind of a scary thing, I try to convert you, exactly you right now, and I'm not going to, that would be really, really awkward. Um, but what if in our copy we tried to do that? And I like this idea so much that I have a poem for you that illustrates my love for this idea. Roses are red, violets are blue, donate to a teacher with the same name as you. Has anybody seen this before? Nobody saw this before? Okay, cool. Any idea where, who might have written this? This is marketing copy. This was in an email by Donors Choose. Yeah, exactly. Donors Choose sent this out in, on Valentine's Day in 2014. Um, the whole idea behind this was to say, okay, my name is Joanna Weeb. 
I am, I've donated donors' shoes in the past. All they're going to do is say, here is a person with the same name you have. Donate to that person. What happens? So I get matched up with Mr. Weeb, who teaches French, and he needs $68. That's it. I might not ever have donated to anything resembling French language classroom things. I'm, he might be in another country, I don't know, or another state at least, for me, another country. Um, I don't know. What happened? All the only thing, the only thing that was going on there was my name was shown on the page with somebody else. That's it. There's a match between our names. As a result, people who got this were three times more likely to donate, to give three times as much, and it reactivated lapsed donors. What was going on there? What was so interesting that people suddenly gave more money? People suddenly paid attention. It's just like, <laughs> you actually saw yourself, right? Like, your name is right there, and there's a reason to pay attention suddenly. That's like an amazing thing. It doesn't, of course, mean that a name is a silver bullet. I'm not talking about go forth and use first names wherever possible. But it does mean, well, we know. We know, and you can't see the message on here, and that's by design, by the way. Um, there's, there's so much. There's so many messages. I feel like I'm like in 1995 saying, oh, there's so many messages. We all know and we've heard for so long that people are like attacked by so many messages every day. They're struggling for cues of relevance, for something that looks like themselves on the page. We've gone from, you know, 2,000 ad messages a day to now 5,000 a day. Okay, so that's really overwhelming so overwhelming that we just decide not to deal with the data. So here's some less <laughs> overwhelming stuff. Of those 5,000 messages that you see a day, in a day, how many do you remember? Well, we recognize 50, and we remember four. Like four, four, 5,000 and only four actually stick. Do you think, when you think about your copy, do you think you're writing the copy that sticks? Do you think you're one of the four that gets remembered? I'd say by and large, most of us are not. It's very, very easy to fall into the group of 4,996 missable, avoidable messages. But what's interesting is that it's not that hard, maybe, to compare ourselves to the four that stick and try to get into that space, try to compete with the others that stick, not the missable ones. That 10 second copy that you're writing, that summarized copy that you're writing makes you one of the forgettable ones. We're not average, your business isn't average, but the way we're talking about it, it's like we're trying so hard not to be noticed there's such an opportunity here to just say things that are real, to actually talk to your prospect in a real way using real words. Now, I'm going to talk to you about exactly that and show you some examples of what I mean. Um, but you might be wondering, OK, well, if there's so many messages and you know people don't read online, as people love to say, how could the answer possibly be, Joanna, to write more copy, to say more words? I would say the answer to that is because it's not, the answer is not to keep doing what you've been doing. These, these summarized sad messages, like save time and money. I think like this is my like life's purpose somehow. It became to like battle the message that is save time and money, which is the favorite message of every boardroom on the planet and the least favorite message of every prospect on the planet. It's used so often. I keep a swipe file of all the save time and money messages I come across. And this one was most recent when I was shopping for like candy buffet stuff for my Nana's 90th. They sold candy in bulk, save time and money. <laughs> it's candy. Like candy has got to be the most emotional, fun sort of purchase you could possibly, you're buying it in bulk. You're gonna get a lot of candy. And they went down to, save time and money. Now, what if we were to say, okay, fine. Let's well, fine, we'll be fine with the save time and money message, but how do we at least make that stand out, make that noticeable? And that's exactly what we're talking about here. 
is this idea of getting specific, or put more simply, just really zooming in. Right now, we're so zoomed out. We're at summary levels all the time. We're way far back from the message, and our prospects are way far back from it. What if we zoomed in, and looked closer at what we're really saying when we say, save time and money? Then we'd be saying something that's slightly more specific, like get the lowest candy prices and $6 flat rate shipping, which happens to be bullet points that were underneath that super summarized headline that no one was going to read in the first place. At least that, and I'm not saying save time and money is a message or that this is the message, but this is a more specific version where I can actually visualize something real. Okay, $6 flat rate shipping, now I know. Before it was save time and money and you were hoping I would read the next line, but I'm not gonna read the next line, I'm just gonna go looking for whatever, cop, whatever candy I actually want. Zooming in, it's not about long versus short. It's not about conversation of does long copy work? Oh no, that's too long. The question is, should we zoom in or should we stay at a surface level, zoomed out? So. We like to test this stuff. We have people that we work with who are very nice to let us test this stuff as well. Um, and so I'm gonna show you a couple. We tested a home page for a popular um, deodorant. It's called Sweatblock. We tested two home pages that were approximately the same length, basically the same length. Those are them side by side. Um, don't worry, I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna show you the things you need to see, but those are like, that's the length of it. Variation B, which is the one over here on the right, simply zoomed in, right? We replaced the summaries with detail. So where there was a summarized message in the control, we were like, okay, what if we unpacked that and just really looked at what that actually means? Like how, to, how, like how could we get specific with this summarized message? So the control would have a high level summary like control sweat, stop embarrassment, and stop excessive sweating for up to seven days per use, okay? so. Right? Most of us will look and go, okay, not, not tragic, copy, and the subhead there has a little bit of detail, but what if we actually zoomed in on what that really looks like? What does stop embarrassment actually look like for somebody who sweats enough that they've landed on this page and they are now shopping for a product that will help them stop embarrassment? What does that look like for them? Control your sweat, wear what you want. That's more specific, right? We're not taking up a lot of room either. We still have very few words there, but now you can wear what you want. Possibly more interesting, we zoomed in on that actual pain and then stop excessive sweating for up to seven days with just the dab of a towelette. So now I know what that actually looks like. I don't just stop excessive sweating for seven days, oh wait, how? Oh, with the dab of a towelette, okay? Another one, high level summary, is up to seven days of sweat relief. What does sweat relief look like? It's not my job as your reader to figure out what sweat relief looks like, and it's not your job to summarize it to this level, so we illustrated it. Get up to seven days of dry high fives, hugs, and hoorays. That's sweat relief, a dry high five, raising your arms up, hugging people without fear that you're like damp or something, real things that people were actually going through, and variation B, of course, beat the control, doubled paid conversions. Just by zooming in, just by adding a few more words to help people see themselves on the page. Okay, so when we do that, when we do that, whenever you get a win, obviously people are like, okay, what's next? And we're like, great, let's do something even more interesting then. So what we had done to find those messages that I just read out to you, is we'd gone through, and I think Momoko is gonna talk about Finding your message a little later, I think so. Yeah, okay, good. Um, so I'm not gonna get into the details of it, but we went, Sweatblock sells on Amazon. There are like a thousand reviews of the product on Amazon. So we went through those reviews and we looked for really sticky messages inside those reviews. And when we were doing that, we were doing that to like find what the real pains are, what people were actually going through, what those specifics are that we need to put on the page to avoid summaries and help people see themselves on the page. Um, so we had all of this great stuff to work with, all of these specifics. Um, and so we said, okay, well, what if we like zoom in on the pain that sweat block is killing? What if we did that instead? So we ran a second test against the new winning control. That's the one showing over here. Um, and what we really did is we tacked on something at the top of it. I'm gonna, zoom, I'm gonna show you that right now. This part here was added new. That was really it. Then we kind of like bumped 
the sweat block reveal down below. So our control had this pain-free hero where the product was the hero and this like benefit was the hero. And we tested that against a pain-filled hero where the prospect in their pain was the hero. There was no product yet. There's no product mentioned at all. At all. And this is, can, this is a scary thing for a lot of companies. This idea of delaying the product reveal on the homepage is like, let's not, we're not going to try that. Thanks, good idea. What else do you have? Um, so, but, but we pushed forward because we had a winner in our back pocket and we we're like, well, just trust us. That one worked. What if this one works too? So what we did here is we actually used something called a PAS framework for copywriters. If you're not a copywriter, now you now know this. Uh, problem, agitation, solution. So you open with the problem, you agitate it, make them really feel that, and then you solve it, and your product is the solution. So we use this, and this is kind of how it breaks down. Problem, agitation, solution. There's a lot of room there that's spent not talking about the product at all, talking fully about your prospect and what they're really feeling. We zoomed in on that problem and how it presents itself in real life. Like, it doesn't even have to be hot out. My armpits are always wet. If that's true for you, if you feel that, if that's what actually brought you here to this landing page, or in this case it was a home page, but also sometimes sadly used as a landing page, um, that's going to resonate more than control or stop embarrassment might resonate. Um, and then we listed out all of these real examples not summaries, absolutely specific things. If you suffer from excessive sweating, deodorant isn't enough. We swipe that language from the Amazon reviews. You've likely tried to hide your secret. All of this swiped from reviews. Never wearing light blue or light gray. Black is best. Wearing a sweat soaker undershirt. We got that language from reviews as well. These things that you can't think up if you don't, one, feel that pain first, or listen to the actual pains that people are experiencing. And once you see this, if this is all true for you and you see this on the page, this is not about converting the average visitor. This is converting the visitor who should be buying your product. This visitor, this is a big opportunity for so many businesses. So we did that. And, oh, this is gonna overlap, sorry. The new variation beat the high-performing control by 49% paid lift. So we went from doubling it to even adding more on top, not by changing the product, not by changing the price, not by changing the traffic going to, nothing changed except what was actually the words that we were using on the page. It works in email as well. Um, so I'm gonna very quickly show you how it worked for us when we worked with Wistia. So everybody know Wistia? Love Wistia? Yes, right? Yes, I do, okay. Cool, so they have onboarding emails like a lot of software solutions do. Three different onboarding sequences triggered by different activities based on where you are as a trial user. Um, so this was an eight email series. We tested, sorry, we tested ours against their control in HubSpot um, and ours brought in 3.5 times the paid conversions. So pretty significant. All we did, we kept eight emails, we reorganized them a bit so there was a better flow between them, but all we did was rewrite them. Again, nothing else change, just rewrite and then test it. I'm gonna show you a control, I'm gonna read it to you, and you can identify if you think it's summarized or specific enough, and then I'm gonna read you the one that we wrote, that we tested against it. So the first one here, you can see it, this is the actual email here on the left, and the copy I've just blown up a bit there. So, customize your player. 18% is a lot. That's the improvement in play rate that Wistia customers see by customizing the color of their video player appearance to reflect their company branding on their website. It's that easy. Then there's a the video. Get more plays on your videos by customizing your player colors. Okay, so you're busy. You're a busy person. You are trying to run your business or you're busy in your marketing department and you get this email. Does this stop you from continuing to do what you were doing before? Do you get it? Do you know why you should move forward? Do you actually understand anything? Or are you kind of like, wait, what's a player? 18% isn't a lot. What are you talking about? And then you stop reading. Kind of that, right? So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing. I don't really know what you're talking about. And you move on. So we're like, okay, you guys do have a good solution here. You have something awesome and they're just not getting it. So let's zoom in. 
What does 18% improvement actually mean? How is that a good lift? Zoom in on the video player. What are we talking about there? Zoom in on my life as your prospect. Help me see your product making my life better in real ways. We rewrote it, you will notice it is longer, but it's saying the same thing just with more words. We saw 18% more people click play when we did this first name. We customized the color of our video players. That's all it took to get nearly 20% more views of our videos. The Wistia video player defaults to gray, which is nice, but gray. So why stick with gray when you can go with hot pink or dollar bill green or, well, Wistia blue? Take a look. Image shot. You can change a video's player color in two clicks in Wistia. Getting 18% more views is pretty major. Videos that used to get 100 views a day now get 118 views a day. In a month, that's an extra 500 plus views. And it only takes something like 11 seconds to make this very simple, but very powerful change to your videos. Call to action, PS. We went into more detail. We just said more things. We actually helped them understand what 18% looks like because you saying 18% is a lot does not make it true. And I also don't know what that really means or what that would really look like. So we did this with every email in that sequence and we got that lift that I mentioned. And of course, for the team at Wistia, this was uh, slightly uncomfortable. And most of the longer copy that you test is going to make you uncomfortable, and that's usually how you know you're doing it right. It's more copy than we're used to. We also pulled all the videos, almost all the videos from their emails, which did not fly very well for a video company, um, but it paid out in the end. We had that uh, triple paid conversion rate. In almost every case, there was two to three times more copy in the email than in the control. People will read it. People will read it, the right people, the average visitor, forget the average. The people that you're actually trying to convert, that one reader you're really trying to convert, they'll read it and they'll, they'll do more because they'll actually get it. They didn't have to do any work and you're starting to actually get inside their head with those specifics. Knowing what dollar bill green is versus change video player color, which I don't know what that looks like. We just wanna get inside their heads and your words are there to do exactly that. They can do that. We're just putting these barriers around them. We're saying they're not really allowed to do that much. People don't read online, things like that. People do read online. But we're not afraid to read. Just don't make your prospects, your visitors, don't make them do the work you should be doing. Sometimes you can be summarized, sometimes you can be at a high level, but in most cases, it would do you great favors in your world to just zoom in, test more words, zoom right in on them, get specific, Test your words, they are free in unlimited quantities. That's all, thanks. Thank you very much, Joanna. We're gonna, we got a little bit of time, just a couple of questions real quick. So there's one, I don't, yeah, I don't know if we wanna do that. When you test, how do you know it was a copy that made the difference since the designs are different? Sorry, which one are you taking? Let, I was reading that something one. else, sorry. Let's skip that one. Okay, I didn't know uh, which one. Doesn't matter. How do you know um, that was the copy that made a difference? Somebody wants to give you kudos uh, for your strong gift game. Well, that's what but I'm here for. Let's look at a better one. Uh, how would you weigh the importance of the right copy against the images that complement them? Well, they work together, so all the good designers and copywriters on the planet, I think, know that you have to work together. Um, so weighing the difference, is that where the question went? Oh, how would, whoa, whoa. how would you weigh the importance of the right copy against the images that complement them? I mean, so from my perspective, what we do is um, a copy first approach. So start with the message and then work with design to make that message come to life. So that's, it's not really a weighing, it's like which one kind of comes first. Um, if copy, if you're trying to convert people and if copy can actually get people to say yes, then we've seen copy should come first, and then you work with design to make sure that that comes to life. So that's what I would say for like weighing the two. I don't know if that answers the question though. Yeah? Then uh, in the words of Ollie Gardner, copy informs design. Ollie, nice. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, Vianna. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> It was a pleasure.